Okay, so you love watching YouTube videos. They're your entertainment, your educational material, your social life when everyone else has abandoned you. Fun fact, there is a lot of content on YouTube, like a buku large amount of things to watch all day, every day. According to Google, 500 hours of new content is uploaded every minute. If you were to sit down and watch all of the videos that are uploaded today, only today, you would be watching for the next 82 years. Not that long ago, people thought it was pretty cool to have 8 gigs of storage on their phone. Then we thought, oh man, that guy has a thousand gigs. It's a terabyte. That's amazing. Today, Google, who owns YouTube if you didn't know, is running 2.5 exabytes of data every single day. That's 2,500 terabytes of data. That's crazy nuts. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, let's take a look at how they make that much data do their bidding. First off, the upload. Let's take two different people that are uploading to the tube. Myself and Marquez Brownlee. For me, I've got my 10 minute video of the Tay Tay concert that I shot on my iPhone, which will take up about one gig of storage space. On the other hand, Marquez is shooting in 4K, or better with his fancy cameras, and this number can vary hugely, but let's just say that his 10 minute video shot on fancy cameras in 4K averages around 2 gigs a minute, which is way on the low side. So the 10 minute video that he uploads is 20 gigs of storage space. You can see how that 500 hours quickly adds up to an insane number of data to store. So what can you do? You guessed it. It's a shrink ray! Joke. Actually the answer is compression. The first thing that will happen to my Tay Tay video when uploaded is that YouTube will take it and turn it into something called a mezzanine, which is a high quality copy of the video. Then that mezzanine will be chopped up into small chunks that high level math magic can be worked on to get it down to a reasonable size. Each chunk is about 5 seconds long. Now comes the part of the process that I don't actually understand all that well, so just bear with me here. In order to compress Tay Tay, the tube uses a codec which stands for compression and decompression, or encoding and decoding, depending on who you ask. This is necessary because whatever process you use to make the video smaller will then be used in reverse to make the video watchable again whenever my besties want to see the hell of a time I had at the Swifty event. 90% of the process of compressing the video is done by computers, but as we all know, computers make mistakes and don't exactly know what things look good to the human eye. So YouTube has teams of people that look at videos that have been compressed and point out compression artifacts like banding or blocking to help train the process to be more pleasing to watch. Getting into the grit now, there are two main types of compression. Spatial or intra-frame coding, which is compressing by going frame by frame and throwing away the bits that humans can't see, and temporal or inter-frame redundancy coding, which is more complicated. So let's explain it. Interframe coding looks at the parts of the frames that are basically the same and repeats them. It breaks each frame into 8x8 eight eight pixel macro blocks and then repeats only the blocks that change. In order to narrow things down even further, block motion estimation is used. This is guessing where the blocks will go. Motion vectors for the blocks are created to make the most accurate guesses. However, this motion compensation isn't enough by itself. The way to get from one frame to the next is saving the motion difference between the actual and compensated frames. You must add the residual frame, which has been subtracted from the previous frame. Residual frames are highly compressible. There are three main types of frames here. P frames, I frames, and B frames. P frames, which have instructions attached to them, require half as much data as an I frame, which is essentially just a JPEG. There are also B frames, which are predictions that go between I frames and P frames. B frames use a quarter as much space as I and P frames. Sometimes videos can be corrupted or missing frames. That weird effect where it looks like someone spilled water on the film and now you can see through the top layer to the next is caused by a missing I frame, which was supposed to clear away the old image to make way for a new one. Now that we've covered video compression, Let's play it back in order to actually watch the video. First, you search up Tay Tay's latest video. Whatever internet provider is closest to you will have hard drives dedicated to storing the most popular videos. 
the provider closest to you is checked first. If they don't have that video, the one that is further away is checked, and so on until you find a server with the video. It's like a giant tree, the root being YouTube storage and the branches out in the world being local servers. The video is broken up into pieces in a process YouTube likes to call sliced bread. As the video is played, the next piece of bread is laid down and adapted to play at the correct bitrate for the viewer. This allows for an adaptive bitrate, which changes every time a new slice of bread is laid down. The bitrate is the amount of data that is being used. Generally, low bitrate equals low quality or resolution, and high bitrate equals high quality resolution. The different video formats are a reflection of this. Congratulations! The video has played back and now it's over.